although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to Putin. Hello, everybody. Uh, so on the so on the John Show. I'm he. It is the evening edition. Baby, it's late. It's getting late in the evening. How y'all is? Uh, come on in. The water mm, is kind of murky. Hey, doing Julia and Amber and Aaron and Lady Rochelle and Regina and Isaiah and Terry Bailey and Terry. The two Terry's here and Regina and Victoria. Whole bunch of y'all. Hey. The White House is burning, Rita. Uh, get some water. It's on fire. Fire. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Danny King, the White House is a burning. It's a burning fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Warren Johnson. Uh, what is it there? It's a fire. It's a fire. It's flame. A, a roaring flame. My heart is... is. What's that little that skunk? Uh, on um, Mary, Mary Melody's, uh, what's the Bugs Bunny? That that skunk was always flirting with the cat. He thought it was a skunk <laughs> uh, of a frame, uh, a roaring frame. Come to me to the Cosby. Yeah, Natasha, the house is on fire. Let me tell y'all something. Uh, Pray the Lord, Clarence. Uh, we got a problem. Um, <sighs> our enemies are looking at us. And they are getting, they're cleaning off their weaponry, Tony. They're cleaning their weaponry. For those of you who don't watch the news, I'm going to help you out tonight. I know it's late, like 11.24. I'm going to see if I can do this real fast. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. Okay? It's 11.24, Warren. Mm -hmm. The enemies, North Korea and Putin, uh, Russia, and all, and all their allies, including China, okay? China. Uh-huh. Uh, they're cleaning off their weapons. Why? Because they see that there is a hole in the bucket, dear Liza. And what's the bucket? The United States is the bucket, and there's a hole. We are our our, our skirts is being shown. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think we're naked, and our enemy is looking into the windows because the curtains are open, and we're naked taking a shower. Pepe Le Pew, thank you, Terry Lockhart. Pepe. Let you come to me to the gods by a roaring flame. All right? And we are, everybody's jumping ship in the Trump administration because this one guy's left, Marty, one adult just left today. The last adult of the Trump administration resigned today. The house is on fire. Let me tell y'all something. Just a couple days ago, Donald Trump did a good thing. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did a good thing, and I wanted to post about it. I just didn't have the time, but I wanted to post about the good thing he did. He uh, is supporting this prison reform. It's a great thing. It is monumental, y'all. I don't think y'all understand. This has not happened in, in my whole life when I'm in my 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can give a lot of credit to, <coughs> um, <coughs> what's her name? Um, that, that Kardashian girl, when she broke in in the White House and told Trump to pardon this woman, who none of us knew about, and that kicked off something. Prison reform. It's a great thing. If Trump would just brag more on his accomplishments, he could possibly have some kind of respect somewhere. I'm not sure where, but he'll have some respect somewhere on the other side. All right? If he would just talk more about his accomplishments, and trust me, he got a couple. Believe it or not, he got a couple. If he talked about that, then he would be a little more respected. On to the fortunately... Um, every time he opens his mouth, he does and says something that causes the the smoke to get uh, more, you know, yeah, your boy Pastor Daryl Scott is taking credit for that. Yeah, I, I know he is, Dana. Ain't that about nothing. He taking credit for that. Mm-mm. That's that Kardashian girl, I believe. 
kicked it off. Yeah, she did. And then that other boy, uh, the boy with the receding hairline, uh, Donald Trump's uh, his chief of something, okay? Uh, that guy right there, mm-hmm, he pushed the bill. And, uh, yeah, so that, that black preacher, please. How long has that boy been sitting in that White House? Uh, well, he ain't in the White House, but you know, Daryl Scott, please. He ain't, he ain't nothing. Yeah, all right? Uh, it, it's, it, it's what's getting ready to happen, though. I'm, I'm getting ready to prophesy to y'all. All right? I'm going to prophesy. Here's what's getting ready to happen. They've got to make a scuffle. They've got to start a fire. I'm talking about the Trump administration. The White House has got to wag the dog. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, y'all remember Monica Lowe to the whiskey. Remember that? Mm-hmm. You got to blow a bomb. You got to at least first make a bomb, and then you got to uh, send it over to another nation and drop it. Y'all understand? Yeah, come on. I got to clarify. I got to prophesy. Yeah, because... The White House is on fire, and we're naked, and the enemy is looking, so we have to do this. We have to do what the peacock do, all right? He's just, you know, you got to fluffle your feathers. You got to look like you're on top of the world. You got to, you know, you know, put a ring on it, all right? You got to cause a distraction. Trust me, y'all, somebody getting ready to either drop a bomb or prepare one, or make a noise, or threaten a nation. It never fails. He has lost Fox News. Donald Trump lost Fox News today. Ann Coulter is really the president in the United States. Laura Ingram is the vice president. Rush Limbaugh is the secretary of somebody, all right, because he watches Fox News every morning to get to see what the people are saying. He's not listening to the American people. He listens to Fox News, and Fox News are the ones who causes the White House to uh, uh, do certain things. All right? So what did he do? He made an announcement and said that we defeated ISIS. He tweeted about it, and he, made a, he didn't go to the American people live on television, like at least what Barack Obama did. No. He made a video from the White House, a recorded video, said that we defeated ISIS and we're pulling the troops home. He did that, and his own generals didn't know he was doing that. Who does this? His own people, his own secretaries of, of stuff, and military might, didn't know that the man was going to do this. And what did he do? He put the, the your sons and daughters in danger. So what happened? The Secretary of Defense, Jim, Jimmy boy, mad dog, James Mattis, quit. He resigned and wrote a letter. And the letter didn't say, I want to thank you, Barack, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Donald uh, J. to the Trump for your service and allow me to serve you because I'm at the, I'm at the, uh, I'm at the pleasure of the president. And you know how y'all do those, uh, you write those salutations or whatever you like, like what maybe um, Apostle Paul would say, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray that you are well in the Lord and in the power of us. You are the, no, no, not James Mattis. Oh no. He was like, you know what? You probably need to hire somebody who agrees with what, or the things that you like to do. Because I ain't the one. Bye-bye, love. Bye-bye, <laughs> loneliness. That's what James Mattis did. That's why they called him Mad Dog. The last adult left. Wow, and they were the ones standing behind him. Yes. They, yep, he gone. He gone. That's number one. Number two. Um, the feds raised the interest rate. And what happened? The stock market went pew! Let's see what the, the market, the Dow uh, ended at uh, minus 464 today. The NASDAQ minus 108. Uh, the S&P uh, minus 39 today. Pew! 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fifth secretary of Madden's resignation was, was pivotal. He just can't work with the stupidity anymore. This was his last straw. The, and watch this. This had not happened in history since the early 1900s with William Jennings. I think his name is Bryant. All right, now y'all know I'm a history buff. The last time that happened was with William Jennings Bryant under the Woodrow Wilson administration. I think he might have been the Secretary of State. He had been, this man had been, William Jennings Bryant was an, was an important man, was a powerful man, and he was the Democratic's nominee for president probably about two, three, four times. That's how powerful he was. We had not seen such um, a, a resignation of, that's of, since since then. This is big, y'all. So what's happening? Our our behind is, is flopping in the wind right now, and the enemies is 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 cleaning off their weapons because they see that the White House is on fire, and it has weakened our nation. We in trouble, y'all. We in trouble. Now that's number two. Number three, he wants to build this stupid wall to the point where now he's not even calling the wall no more. He's calling it. Uh, a fence, and now he's not calling the fence, he's calling it sticks. <laughs> so he wants Congress to give him some money now, but unfortunately for him, in February, the Democrats are getting ready to take over. So he ain't, ain't no money. He will not get any money for the wall. And so what happened? Rush Lim Limbaugh says, man, forget that wall. Laura Ingram said, man, forget that wall. With you, there ain't there ain't no money coming because we don't have a Republican overtake. So it's over, it's over. And so what the Trump says, I'll take credit for shutting down the government. He said that a couple uh, weeks ago. Remember in that little meeting, all right? He said that, but now he don't want to sign the papers that won't shut it down. So Merry Christmas, everybody. If you work for the government, Merry Christmas. Uh, Donald Trump is due to go on vacation and Mara to the Lago tomorrow. Yes, he, yep. And so, shut down the government. I'm going to go to Mar-a-Lago and have a great time, eat McDonald's, and go to sleep and make love to my wife. Well, I don't think he's doing that. I don't think she even wants him to touch him, all right? Meanwhile, those of you uh, who work for the government, I'm sorry. And and some even saying, the experts saying that you may have to work without pay. And, you know, there might be a furlough. We don't know. But Merry Christmas. So this is a Christmas for y'all and it's a Christmas for the enemy who's getting ready to they uh, shining up their weapons of mass destruction. Five billion dollars Tony Williams says for this dumb stupid wall. Plus that girl died on, on his wall. You see what I'm saying Tony? You see what I'm saying T Tawana? I work for the Fed we will be okay. Well praise God we got at least somebody here who's got a positive attitude towards this. Merry Christmas because your president don't really care about you. He care about his balls. You understand what I'm saying? He, that's what he's doing. He's, he care about his balls. And what that saying is, he is trying to show that he's fighting for a promise that he made to his base. He's scared of his base. He's making this promise about this wall. And at the beset or at the cost of your paycheck, he going to shut down the government. Now, I don't think it's going to happen. I think there's going to be an 11th hour thing where y'all know how the government does. Yeah, they do this every every couple of years. And he probably cannot go on his vacation tomorrow. Uh, the, the schedule is for that he'd fly out tomorrow, the White House, but I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen if they're going to shut this thing down. I can't see that happen. I just can't see it happen. He claims to be a billionaire. He knows enough rich people. Why don't they just pay for it? Man, Dana, yeah, mm -hmm. he is nuts. But we have other measures in place. Tawana, all right? So, he says we defeated ISIS. He put American troops and America in trouble. Okay? Stock market crash. All right? Secretary Mattis resigned. He wants money for the wall, so he's probably going to try and shut down the government, all right? The White House is on fire. Now, and I looked at the list of people who left the administration. Uh, Reince Priebus, gone. 
John Kelly will be gone in a couple of days. Okay, Katie Walsh, White House Principal Deputy Chief of Staff, gone. Chris, uh, Kirsten Nielsen, the White House Deputy Chief of Staff, gone. Joe Hagan, Chief of Staff, gone. Rick Dearborn, gone. Michael M. Brosny, the Chief, the Officer, the, the Chief of Staff, uh, Director of the Office, gone. Uh, Stephen, Steve Bannon, okay, Counselor and House the uh, Chief of the Strategists, he gone. Uh, Dinah Powell, uh, the economist, the uh, what is she, the counsel to the president, gone. Carl Icahn, the regulatory reform, gone. Reed Cordish, assistant uh, to the president and, and the technological initiatives and what have you, okay? Gone. Uh, Sebastian Gorka, uh, uh, gone. Carlos uh, Razillo, I, I never could pronounce his name. He's the deputy assistant. Gone. Michael Anton, the deputy assistant. Gone. Reagan Thompson. Uh, gone. Ray Starling. Gone. Michael uh, Denzero. Okay. <laughs> gone. George David Banks. Gone. Ben Howard. Gone. Cindy Sims. Gone. Kelly Sandler and, and Grace Call and John McNair. M McIntyre, I'm sorry, McIntyre, whatever the name is, he's the personal aide to the president. Gone. Olympus has fallen. Come on. A government shutdown means several agencies will be inactive. Mm -hmm. Kind of like they are right now, Joe Hill said. <laughs> General, uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, Michael Flynn, National Secretary Advisor. Gone and arrested. <laughs> okay. H.R. McMaster. Gone. Okay. Uh, K.T. McFarland, uh, Deputy National Secu uh, uh, Security Advisor, gone. The other security advisor, Ricky, gone. Myra, gone. Homeland Security, Tom Bassett, gone. Rob Joyce, Deputy Homeland Security Officer, he gone. Uh, Keith Kellogg, the Executive Secretary of Chief of Staff of National Security Council, gone. Rich H Higgins, uh, National Security Council, gone. Uh, Ezra, uh, National Security Council, gone. Derek... Uh, Harvey, Senior Director of the Middle East uh, uh, of African Affairs, gone. Tim Zemer, gone. Uh, Rob uh, Porter, White House Staff Secretary, gone. Sean Spicer, the President's uh, uh, Press Secretary, gone. Michael uh, Double, Duke, Duke, whatever his name is, and Anthony Scaramucci, okay, the Mooch. Yeah, White House Director of uh, Communications, gone. Hope Hicks, the next director, she gone. Uh, Sarah Huckabee Sander, uh, Sanders is still there. Lord have mercy to us today. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. All right. Mark uh, Short, uh, White House Director of, of Legislative Affairs, gone. Mary Elizabeth Taylor, uh, Legislative Affairs of, nomi uh, of Nominations, gone. Gary Kahn, gone. Uh, Kenneth Juster, gone. George uh, Sif... Sif I can't say his name. S uh, Sifakis. Sifakis, yeah, that one right there. He's the director of the Office of Public uh, Liaison, gone. Uh, Omarosa, uh, yeah, uh, Manigal, Newman the director of the communication for the Office of Public Liaison. Liaison. Not only is she, was she gone, they, she, they, they quickly uh, chased her out of there and she held on to the, to the rings of the altar. <laughs> Don McCann uh, and Keith uh, uh, Schiller, gone. This list continues, y'all. If I keep going, I'm going to, y'all going to be up all night. R R Ronnie Jackson, the physician to the president. He gone. Chris Christie, the chair of the Opioid and Drug Abuse uh, Commission. <laughs> he gone. <laughs> Charlie Baker gone. Roy Cooper. Well, well, I, yeah, anyway, they all gone. They all gone. All White House is burning. It's burning. The White House is what? Emptying out, Dean says. Wiped out. Ben Carson is still there. All right. Office, the, even the vice president, many of his people are gone. Nick Ayers, of course, he think he's taking over. Um, he might be taking over this uh, 
other position um, with the, um, uh, what's his name, the chief of staff. All right. Mark, Mark Lotta. Uh, it's Mike Young, Deputy Department of Agriculture. The scandal of, of, of the H.H. H. Secretary Tom Price gone because of scandal. Scott Pruitt of the EPA, of uh, he gone. Ryan Zinke of the he's the Interior Secretary. These people are gone because of scandal. They were in the uh, misappropriations of funds and and spent all this expensive furniture and stuff that you, your your monies. Uh, Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, he was fired. Jeff Sessions, the 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 um, Attorney General, he was fired. Uh, David uh, Shulkum, or whatever his name was, he was the Veterans Affairs guy. He's fired. Okay, uh, the list goes on and on, y'all. It's a it's amazing. I just John Gibson, Department of Defense guy, he gone. Robert Wilkie gone. Defense. Uh, uh, Robert Mc, McMahon, Mc Mc Mahan, uh, whatever. <laughs> He resigned. The White House is burning. But the White House is burning, y'all. What we're going to do? We have never seen anything like this in the history of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands. It's not even a republic. That's, I think that's a, that's a misinterpretation. We're not even a republic. We're not even a democratic republic. We are, I think we are, we are, we're an oligarchy. That's what we are. We're not a republic. We can't be that. We're not a democratic state as, as system. We can't be that because what it means and who's in power. We are an oligarch. Understand that it's these many people who rule everything, okay? Because it's it says of the people, by the people, and for the people, but that's a lie. That has not been the case in a very long time. And when you see people coming on your TV and says the American people want this, they they, they always say that, but that's not what the American people want. Matter of fact, you stole election from the American people. Go back to George Bush and um, uh, what's that? Uh, George V. Gore. Okay, that election of the two thousands. Remember that uh, there was a ripoff there. The thing with the popular vote and had to go to the Supreme Court because you it ain't really above of the people by the people for the people. So you're lying to us. Uh, Donald Trump did not win the popular vote. It went to Hillary Clinton. Of the people, by the people, the people spoke. But then the other folks that went to college, they spoke over the people who spoke. You know what college I'm talking about, right? So it ain't of the people, by the people, for the people. So when Huckabee get up there, the press secretary says, and the American people want this. No, you want this. The president want this. The White House want this. Your That administration want this. You cannot speak for the American people. Please, politicians, stop saying that. You're lying. Because if the American people wanted that, why did this November vote happen this way where the other party has, is getting ready to take over a Congress? How? Because that's what the American people really were trying to tell you. They couldn't tell you nothing until they went to the, to the, the booth and pulled the lever. <laughs> then their voices was heard. The original uh, oligarchs of the rich slave owner, land owners of Virginia never intended what Abraham Lincoln said. Yeah, later. Never intended. Come on, Dan. You better you better teach this. Exactly why is a bump even there? He said bump. <laughs> Did you mean Trump? <laughs> I knew this was too be too be bad for this country when in the president election we had two go to sleep with the result and we woke up <laughs> Jermaine Felton. <laughs> Boy, you better stop. Politicians and corrupt pastors dropping like an earnest. <laughs> Joey Hill, I love you, man. That's my brother from another mother. Amber, what you saying? Mattis' letter of resignation was classic. What I tell y'all, and they say it will go down in history. Three pages long. 
The best part was that he didn't lie and say the usual. It was on. It was an honor to serve under you. I gave him credit. Yep, I'm trying to tell you. That's how I started this show. James Mattis, I want to salute. I want to salute him. Oh, I want to salute the brother right now. Because that brother is mad dog for real. And this is bad for our national security. That man leaving is bad for our national security. We got Syria at stake here. Of course, of course with the whole Iraq and Iran and all. We've got some serious issues that that this one man single-handedly, I don't think y'all understand, was keeping a, a level of peace. It, ha it helped us go to sleep at night. Mad Dog was watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all know that junkyard dog? Uh, y'all know that little dog that when you walking down the street and you don't walk in front of this neighbor's house because that, that mad dog is in the front lawn and he got a chain on him now, okay? And that chain goes only so far, I mean, you know, and it stops right there at your feet, all right? You take one half of an inch up and you, your head going to be eaten up by that mad dog? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and nobody breaks in that neighbor's house. Nobody. Well, Mad Dog Matters was that guy for us. He watched. He was the defense man. He was the secretary of defense. All right? Well, he gone. And he let Donald Trump know, I ain't kissing up to you behind. I ain't kissing up to you. Bye-bye. Got to go. Now, he is a, mm, he's a Marine, I believe. And there, there's an old saying, a Marine never quits. But this Marine said, I got to get up out of here. I, uh, if I was a Marine, I would support this Marine uh, quitting because he got a commander in chief who's not a leader. This man, he's he's trying to he's trying he's trying he's looking for leadership and he's not getting it. So this Marine didn't want to be guilt by association. <laughs> so he got a body them. I support it. Unfortunately. We're in danger, except the Lord keeps the city. Oh, we labor in vain. We can put a million people on the borders around the country, the circumference of our country, and the enemy still can come in, in, in because in many cases the enemy is already here. How do you think that they were able to take down two towers and then hit the, the Pentagon and then another plane landed in the field over there? How do you think they were able to do that? They didn't come from across the seas and fly the plane across the seas over here. They were already here. You got to understand, you're trying to put a wall up and to, uh, to, to um, protect our borders, but the ones who are coming over illegal are coming over not over the wall. They're coming over in the airplane. <laughs> I don't think y'all get it. The, the smugglers, okay, uh, and the, the ones who are coming over, the illegal stuff is happening Legally, they, they, they're coming over in the plane and others who are coming here, they're overstaying their visas. You see, they come over in the visa and then they overstay. So now they're illegal. And so you're trying to protect the wall, but you're paying more attention to the wall than you are the ones who are here and then their visas run out. It's an inside job, Tony Williams. You better preach this. So you're trying to raise all these billions of dollars to put up a brick, <laughs> a wall, and then what's happening? It is the Trojan horse. The United States has become the Trojan horse. That's how we were. they were able to take those airplanes that we built, number two. We trained those pilots to fly the planes. They went to pilot school in the United States, all right? And then once they were ready, they used those planes against us as weapons of mass destruction. So it's the Trojan horse. We allowed them to come in, you see, legally, and they overstayed. How you think they got the horse into Troy? Anybody know? Uh, the choice that, that it was a gift, and they open up the gates and say, "Ah, here's a truce. Here's a present from us. Uh, it will be like uh, the Statue of Liberty, which was a gift to us. All right, uh, we had the we supplied the pedestal and what have you. We, but it came over here, and can you imagine 
uh, a front, we we and giving that that's, that's that gift that sat there for a, a quite a long time. We didn't know what to do with it, and then we built that thing, and there she is. Give me, give me your your weak and your poor and your huddle mass, all right? Or whatever it says, all right? Can you imagine that a bomb exploding? <laughs> Come on, man. So I'm trying to tell y'all this where we are right now. We live in a Trojan horse. And so the enemy is in a me. Mm, 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 mm. The enemy is in a me. We elected a type of in a me. Yes, you did. And he is going against you all. This man whom we call the President of the United States. And every time we wake up, the news always say breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Every freaking day. We've never, ever seen this in the history of our country. That should be something you should be alarmed about. But your alarming, uh, your feeling of being alarmed should be relaxed a little. Blessings to you, Jim Stoddard, one of my great friends from South Dakota. Should You should relax a little bit because, again, except God keep the city. Hallelujah. Y'all, thank God that God has kept the cities. <clears throat> he has kept us from war. He has kept the enemy at bay. There are saints here. There are children of God that's here in America who are remnants who are keeping us safe and sound because God would not destroy his children. Ooh, hallelujah. I'm here. Jim Stoddard is here. Amber is here. Jermaine and Bernia is here. And Tony and Cynthia is here because God has kept us here to make sure that the cities stay safe from the enemy. All right? So continue to pray for the peace of the United States and pray for the mind of the man who sit in the helm of the White House because he is going through, well, he has some type of uh, cognitive decline. He has a, a type of mental illness, all right, that cannot be reversed. It only gets wor worse with age. It, he cannot reverse this thing, number one. He has yes men and women around him, so he cannot receive counsel. The first step to recovery is to admit that you have a problem. He is narcissistic, so he doesn't he feels that he does not have a problem, which is why he speaks in superlatives. Everything is bigly and powerful, and nobody does it like me. And I know more about uh, um, about military than the generals do, is what he said. He says, I'm an expert in this. I know all of the good words, okay? He's an expert, expert, expert. And so he hires his billionaire friends, and we're in trouble. We're in trouble. He's setting us, but God will protect his people. Come on, Cynthia, come on. And then attack from within the horse. Woo! They enter Troy during a time of supposed peace. And the scripture says, when there's peace, when they say peace and safety, then Bow, sudden destruction will hit the land. And that's what's going to happen. Oh, except God snatches us up. Except he raptures us up. It doesn't matter what you believe, you atheists who are watching this. It doesn't matter how many thumbs down I get on YouTube from you people who are on the other side. I don't care. It don't matter to me. I believe in my heart of heart of the, of the word of God is sound and true. And these things of eschatology that's going to happen, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to serve somebody, you people out there who are doubters. You're going to wake up one day and your behind is going to be on fire. It don't have to be. You can wake up into the arms of Christ or live for Christ or die for him. That's fine because to die for him is to live for him. Oh, you want to wake up into the bosom of, of God and let him rock you, rock you, rock you. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I can't tell y'all. I'm getting ready to turn on my piano and have some church up in here. Uh, can he be saved? Who, Bernia? Can who be saved? If you're talking about Donald Trump, absolutely he can be saved. Everybody who's got breath in their lungs today can be saved. If you're still alive today, you can be saved. If you're dead, it's too late for you. If you died in your sins, it's too late for you. But if you are alive, even the darkest darkest, evil atheists out there can be saved today, and I believe many of them will be saved in the latter day. 
the prostitute that Jesus said will get to heaven before many of you because they eventually will receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, him into their hearts. You may call him Jesus. I call him Yahshua. You can call him Iusus, okay? Or you can call him Emmanuel, but he's, he's still, it, 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 it's really what the name means. It's all about the name, what it means. You understand? You can say potato. I can say patata. It don't matter to me. You can say tomato, and I can say tomato. It's still a fruit. Yes, tomato is not a vegetable. It's a fruit. And so it don't matter to me what you call it, what's in the name. It's the meaning of the name, not so much what you call it. Oh, I'm getting in trouble with the, the Israelite folks over here. I don't care. I'm going to do that whiteboard teaching on the name of Jesus. What's in the name? Get ready. Get, 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 get ready. I might do it tomorrow if I feel like it. Oh, my God, today. So don't worry. Don't you fret. God has his eyes on the city. And he will protect us until that great day of the Lord shall come. Meanwhile, y'all be wise in the way you vote. You be wise in how you run your cities and towns and parishes, okay? Be wise on how you set up people in places. We're getting ready to vote for a mayor here in Chicago. Over 20-something people are running for mayor of Chicago. We've never seen this kind of race before in the history of the city. All right. And so we've got to be careful on how we vote in governors and mayors and commissioners and you name it and congressmen and, and, and you, uh, representatives and senators. All right. We have to be careful. Okay? You got to use your wisdom, but also use knowledge. For those of you who have the gift of knowledge, use it and then go and get your brother who's got the gift of wisdom and y'all come together and make an educated guess when you buy a car. You make an educated guess, don't you? At least I'm hoping you do. You take your time. It took me months to buy the car that I have right now. Why? Because I kept studying it. I didn't want to just walk into a lot and see a car, giving my money and I'm out, and then I'm paying a million dollars a month for it. Not happening. It took me months to buy the car I wanted because I made an educated guess. I said, no, 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 I'm going to get my, my credit score up. And, you know, so I don't have to pay these large this, this, and that. I want to save this money. I'm going to do this. And then I, then I started looking. looking I, I narrowed it down to five cars, then four cars, then three cars, then two cars. It took me months to buy a car. Months. All right? Uh, so you need to make that educated guess when you're trying to vote in somebody who can govern and rule and lord over your body and your finances and where you live, your house, your taxes. These people are responsible for all that stuff. Your well-being. You understand? So why would you not make an educated uh, study on um, how to, who this person is who running for office? You study them like I studied my car. Study them. Find out what they're all about. Because apparently somebody didn't do it because that's why we got Y'all call him Agent Orange. I don't, <laughs> I don't like to demean the office of the presidency. Um, that's just the way it is. It's like that. What? And that's the way it is. What are you saying, Joe Hill? Nah, Cynthia, I said something. She said something first. And how can they be an atheist if they are fighting against something you don't believe in? You only fight for truth, Cynthia. Yeah. Uh, atheism is a lie. I, I don't even believe in the word atheism because it's... it's uh, the Romans chapter 1 tells us that there's no such thing as an atheist, first of all, right? Because it's in them and they just rejected it and that's all. They know it. The Bible says they knew it and they rejected it. So there's no such thing as atheism. <laughs> atheism is you never ever. The average atheist will tell you they once were Christians. Trust me. 100% of the atheists that I know, not 99%, 100% of them all tell me that they once were Christians in church, and many of their fathers are pastors, all right, or deacons or elders or what have you. 100% of them tell me that on my wall. And I have a whole lot of atheists who are my Facebook friends, okay? Uh, something happened. Something ran them away. Uh, the, Joe says believers need to understand there is a parallel existence, uh, that the church is to be in the world but not of it. 
That's good stuff. What happened in D.C. is good for fodder, but we shouldn't attack our welfare to a secular system of greed and corruption, which is why I don't discuss politics anymore with Christians. <laughs> what happened in D.C. should be like what happens in Vegas. Joe Hill. <laughs> Joe Hill is an, ex an, an amazing writer. I have a few of his books here, and I'll be doing some shows on his books, but one of them, that, one, that boy right there can write. There's a few other people here that can write, too. Amazing. They don't say too many words, but when they when they put their words up there, oh my God, today my heart just fall. Uh, well, what happened in Vegas don't affect me, but D.C. governs our whole world. Cynthia and Joe Hill is is making me entertained. I want to go upstairs and get some popcorn right quick, because if, if I can just sit and watch a movie with Joe and Jermaine, I'm going to be blessed. Ah, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Defense Secretary quits amid shutdown battles, market free falls, the, the DOJ controversies, the Russian probes. Okay, you see, all the news stations is talking about it right now. Yeah, we, uh, I think this is CNN, the one At that he hates. PM he, he hates, okay. He hates. The real wolf. He, the man who stood okay. between the president and his specials. Let's see, what he said. Out of protest. Let's see. How did it go down? Well, here General James Mattis went to the White House to discuss his concerns about Syria, literally saying to the president, you have to listen to me. You can't do this. But he was unable. And in that moment, he decided, this is as good as it gets. He left. He put out a scathing letter, a total rebuke of the president's worldview, saying in part, quote, my views on treating allies with respect and also being clear-eyed about both malign actors and strategic competitors are strongly held and informed by over four decades of immersion in these issues. Because you have the right to have a Secretary of Defense whose views are better aligned with yours on these and other subjects, I believe it is right for me to step down from my position. CNN learned late this <laughs> Once again, this president will double down on a controversial decision. Did you hear him? The U.S. military Did you hear him? has also been ordered to withdraw <laughs> half the troops in Afghanistan. That matters is a bad mama. Shut your mouth. That boy, that, whoo, that matters. I knew when he elected, when he selected matters, I said, you know what? Matters ain't no, he ain't no joke. That's one of the ones in his administration that I uh, applauded was Mad Dog. I knew he wasn't no joke. Yes, they were, they were sure 100% of them. Yeah, ooh, we. But we are we are citizens of the world. We we may feel certain symptoms of bad policy, uh, but either we are sanctification and set apart and above, or we aren't. I think Joe Hill is going back with Cynthia. This is this is good, y'all. Y'all see this? Uh, Cynthia says, "Well, what happened in Vegas?" Oh, I read that already. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh oh, somebody came in here who I don't really read his stuff. I, I I never really read his stuff, but I'm about to read it now. Let's, let's see. I have never seen a top U.S. military official say stop the war and pull our troops out. The U.S. has been in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria for 15 years, and still the military generals want more killing. Okay, Colonel Davis. Colonel. I'm sorry, I called you Colonel. Colonel Davis. All right? Because sometimes you are carnal, because sometimes you be going off on me for, for no reasons. You want to do this right here? <laughs> so Colonel Davis, he's saying something. Uh, Cynthia says, I understand separating the church from the state, but it still affects us. Joe Hill, did you hear that? Did you hear that, Joe Hill? Uh, Cynthia's saying something. I want to see what you got to say. You got the speed... You got that quick fingers, Joe. You a you a writer. I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, I'm always amazed. See, it's too late for me to act a fool. It's too late for me to act a fool because certain people come on the wall, and I'm be I'm gonna be honest with you. I built a plate near my heart. Where's my heart, y'all? Somebody stole my. Oh, here it is. I have a plate that I build near my heart. So when the tax come my way, bing, 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 I'm Superman. All right? But sometimes that bullet hit the heart and go up. 
<laughs> up here. <laughs> tomato, tomato, potato. Tom Come on. Uh, all right. So when when your man can't do nothing wrong, when his fart don't stink, that's when you know somebody on here is tribal. I never. I, first of all, I didn't. I didn't vote for Barack Obama. Twice I didn't vote for him. I like the man. I I I like Barack Obama. I like the way he walked. I like the way he talked. I like the way that he he uh, treated his wife, and I like the way he treated his children. He was an upright, upstage man. I I worshiped with him here at Jeremiah Wright's church on the south side on 95th Street. All right, good man. I'm, I'm glad he quit smoking because when you hug him, you just smoke everywhere. <laughs> okay, good man. But he wasn't good enough to be my president, so I didn't vote for him. You see, I understand the process. That's because a man is good. It's like some of you preachers. That's because you can go, ah, 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 and I, ah, 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 don't mean you can be my pastor. That's why we got so many pastors today who's got five members, and he's been pastoring for 30 years. Why? God never calls him the pastor. He just said, uh, preach, do this sermon today. Okay, the people need to hear this word. And you you nailed it. And then somebody said, you need the pastor. God said, you need the pastor, son. Raise your hand. You need the pastor. And then you heard it from the people. You didn't hear from God. And now you're pastoring, and you've been struggling for 30 years. Ah, oh, man. Joe says, I live with, with a disease that affects me, but I'm not a slave to it. I defer to a higher healing. Ooh, Joe, 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 the, the empire strike back. Ah, Joe, that was pretty good. What's Cynthia got to say, though? Y'all got your popcorn? Anybody got popcorn? I like Orville to the Redenbacher. What y'all like? Y'all like that, that cheap uh, Hollywood? <laughs> Is it called Hollywood popcorn? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cynthia says, we're not talking about being a slave. My point is we need to be aware of what's happening, then take a decision on making right decisions for the people. Slam to the dunk, y'all. I somebody put a two point uh bulletin out there in the hole in the in the Cynthia did it. Uh, uh Bernie says itching ears, uh, you are an apostle. I pray your headache away. <laughs> Bernia. <laughs> Bernia. Bird to the near. That's my that's my heart right there. Kevin said we need a good elder in the White House. <laughs> oh. And Kevin Everhart is is my atheist friend. I think, and I, I, I'm not saying this because he's here, Kevin Eberhardt is my favorite atheist. Y'all like, how can he, how can, how can the preacher have a favorite atheist? <laughs> Why? Kevin Eberhardt has been with me for many years when many of his atheist friends, they got out of, they cussed me out and they deleted me. <laughs> not Kevin. No, sir. Kevin might, might be on his way. How do I say this? How, how do I say this in front of Kevin? And the Bible says that uh, a fool says in his heart, <laughs> there is no God. And okay. All right. So Kevin already know where I stand. All right. All right. But I'll tell you, Kevin has been a decent human being, <laughs> a good long time friend of mine. He stayed with me and he don't treat me any kind of way on the wall. He's a gentleman on my wall. That's Kevin Eberhardt. Even though he hate God and he on his way to a place if he don't get saved. I say that with the utmost love and respect for Kevin. He might be on his way to a place where he cannot return. But one day, I believe that Kevin going to get saved. We prefer foul Philistine, he said. <laughs> yeah. Y'all hear me? For those of you who are saved today and you are evangelists, missionaries, or you just love God, minister to Kevin right here and right in front of him. Now watch him leave. It don't matter. Uh, YouTube is watching this. Minister to him. I believe in my heart of hearts that Kevin Everhart, one day before he go to sleep and never wake up, he going to get saved. God is going to deliver this man and going to save him. And Kevin is going to be an evangelist for God.
before he died. Anybody agree with me? Go ahead, y'all, minister. Kevin Eberhardt. You can just call his name. Just type his name in there. He is going to get saved one day, and God's going to deliver him from a life of sin and doubt, and he's going to evangelize. Hallelujah. I feel that in my spirit. Kevin, I feel it. I feel it. Oh, my God, today. I, uh, what, uh, you, Colonel Way says, I worked for Obama in 2008, and he ran on a platform saying he would end the war in the Middle East, and he would do away with the Bush era tax cuts after he won, he gained amnesia, and that's true, I realized we had been had, I did not vote for him in 2012, okay, Davis, I'm with you there, he did have a couple bro broken promises, now, one reason why he did is because he had uh, Congress at that time was fierce. That Congress under the Obama administration was fierce. They wouldn't let him do nothing. He was like, pass a bill. He almost cussed. I heard, he, remember when he wore that, that suit that y'all messed with him about? He said, pass a bill, God. He had, he had to pull himself back. <laughs> they weren't passing no bills. They had him, they said, our job in the Congress is to make sure that this man fail. So they wouldn't do nothing for, for eight years. I can't put all that on Barack Obama. I really can't. Now, I will say he did some things that I didn't agree with, so I don't feel bad for not voting for him. Jesus loved Kevin before he was even thought of. Come on, Cynthia, you better preach this. Joe Hill says Jesus was aware of the Roman system, but operated out of a different kingdom. We aren't him, but we can be civil, uh, civilly aware and even active and still operate our lives under the provisions. If God for his children, which don't need a two-thirds majority. Woo! Woo! Joe Hill! Uh, that's all I'm suggesting. Woo, Joe, that was good. That was poetic, too. My God, today I felt that in my chandelier. It's back there somewhere. Antonio, you agree? Kevin going to be saved. Amber says, in the name of Jesus, Kevin going to be saved. Cynthia says, I stand in agreement in his victory. Kevin going to be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kevin said he ain't going nowhere. He, he, he off work. <laughs> oh, my. Yes. Come on, Jermaine. Kevin, we know him. Yes. Yeah, Jermaine. That's how I met Jermaine. I think, Jermaine, I met you through Kevin, didn't I? Uh, there was an atheist wall, and they always had me coming over there. And they wanted me to side with them. I don't side with no atheist. <laughs> Why would y'all want me to side with an atheist and go against this Christian, this weak Christian over there? Jermaine wasn't a weak Christian, by the way. There was a weak Christian over there, and they was tagging me over there to go against this Christian because I'm a little more radical as a Christian. I'm like, I'm not siding with you to go against my brother in the Christ. Please, y'all tag me for, for naught. Uh, yes, we will... Uh, do a Rome do and trust God. A Rome, uh, is it West, what, what do you mean? God will deliver you, Kevin. God is showing to uh, go, showing to what show you great and mighty things. Oh, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, hey, come on, Marcia. Hallelujah. Yes, Jermaine says, Great to see you, Kevin. Yes, yes. Obama should have went hard like Cheney and Bush. Like he did more other groups than he did for Negroes, Kevin. Kevin is correct. Yeah. Y'all voted for him thinking he's going to be the Negro's president. <laughs> Who do I blame for that? I blame you for it. For the same reason why I'm blaming these Trump people who put him in office. They put him in office to, to build a wall to keep out the Hispanics. And the Muslims. Those two people. That's all they wanted. They wanted the Hispanics and the Muslims out. So they said, we want to vote for this man for that one reason. And these all these little other small little reasons. Eh? Shh, these other small little reasons. Eh? But to put up the wall. And we will vote for you, Trump. And they did. And then he said, after two years now, how long has it been? He said, well, don't call it a wall. It's, I'm putting up some sticks. <laughs> Woo, I got to quit, y'all. I got to go. Now, funny thing about this show tonight, I'm about to rebuke y'all. Why? Last night I did a show on about living holy. <clears throat> I said holiness is right, and seven of y'all showed up the same time tonight, same time. Don't be talking about some, well, it was a rough night. Wednesday nights is hard on me. Please. It's, it was same time last night I did a show called 
Holiness is still right. And y'all didn't show up to the holiness show. Why? Because y'all don't want to live holy. You don't want to hear about holy preaching. But when I brought up the scandal of the White House, all y'all showed up. All my 5,000 friends are here right now. How, how, how is that possible? That the saints don't want to hear about holiness, huh? I did the John Gray show when he gave his Lamborghini, a new Lamborghini to his wife. 15,000 people watched that show over a 24-hour period. But I did the show on holiness last night, and y'all didn't want to stop by. And some of y'all are hip to the crits. <laughs> That's why the church is so weak right now. Weak. You're weak. Y'all are weak amongst weeks. Deanne was working. I let her off, and Cynthia was working too. But the rest of y'all 5,000 folk who are watching this right now, you been telling me y'all was working? Somebody lying. Somebody lying in church. Y'all lying in church. A lawmaker calls Homeland Security. See, y'all ain't the only one lying. Let's see who is lying. Somebody lying. Y'all lying. Y'all lying. Y'all lying. <laughs> y'all need to stop lying. So, so CNN won't be reporting y'all lying. All right. I got to go. I love y'all. Uh, uh, keep hope alive and um, stay safe. Uh, pray for the peace of the United States and pray for the peace of Israel. God never told you to stop praying for Israel. Keep praying for the peace of, I'm talking about the real Israel, not the ones that they made up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> pray for the peace of Jerusalem. All right. And pray for Donald Trump that God regulated his mind. All right. Uh, Victoria says, Amen, Kevin, I touch and agree with Sir Walter and all the others. God will save you and use you for his glory and to further the kingdom. Victoria Dubois has got the last say. I love y'all. Peace to you. Good night. Mr. and Mrs. America and to the men and the women at sea, I pray for your protection in this hard and, and rough time that we're going through right now. God will restore and we will be okay. Good night. Hit the share button. If you're on YouTube, bing, hit the bell over there. Subscribe. Bye-bye.